Hello, um, thank you all for coming. Um, it's glad to see um, so many of you um, uh, weather the rain and um, come to um, our Cloudflare Apps Meetup. So, um, a few familiar faces around. Um, glad to see uh, uh, um, so many of you uh, come back as well. Um, this is the first time we've done a meetup which is focused on our uh, kind of self serve user base. Um, so, also so glad to see um, some new faces as well here. Um, so what I'm going to start off talking about is how Cloudflare works and um, how we build our network out. Um, so how many of you use Cloudflare, either for your personal sites or in work? Yeah. Good view of you. Excellent. <laughs> yes, so um, if you haven't already, uh, feel free to try us out. We, we do have a free plan, which is kind of unlimited if you want to use us for your uh, blog or anything else like that. Um, so the type of things we... Um, well, oh, my click's not working. The uh, type of things we tend to do um, is, uh, I like to think of us as an edge platform. So the things we tend to deal with are things like performance and security. Um, and also, I've left off um, analytics on here, but I'll touch on that towards the end. Um, so in terms of performance, there's um, the kind of things which a traditional CDN would do around things like um, static assets, things like um, images, style sheets, JavaScript, and uh, caching that. We can also do things more advanced, uh, more uh, things surrounding web optimization, so things like um, when you turn to things like um, caching, things like anonymous page visits, so uh, where the request from user to user is the same, um, there's behavior so you can do that. And also, um, when we proxy traffic, we can upgrade it to any protocols, so things like HTTP2, things like um, server images over WebP. Around security, um, there are things like our web application firewall, blocking dynamic attacks, uh, rate limiting, so things like uh, brute force attacks, um, reducing the impact of those as well. Uh, DDoS protection is something we're quite well known for, so um, if you Google our name or go into Google News, you'll see a ton of articles about um, DDoS mitigation. That's kind of what we've uh, developed the name for. Um, but the backbone of our product is really a kind of global network, as you can see here. So. 115 data centers worldwide, and um, we are effectively trying to get ourselves as close to an end user as possible. The way we do that is we physically deploy um, servers in internet exchange points. So where, say, Virgin Media or BT would stop serving traffic, um, or where they would hand over traffic to CDNs or, um, or other transit providers, that's where we try and take over, and we try and uh, peer with those networks, if you like and be as close as possible on that front. Uh, we do quite a good job of that. We're uh, number one in terms of internet uh, IX participation count, um, according to Hurricane Electric. Um, so um, there are also some quite big names there. So we've, we've been able to develop quite a sizable network on that front as well. Um, another interesting property aside from just the scale of our network is how it's built. So if you were to query, say, Google um, around the world, you would get different IPs, you would get different IP addresses of different data centers around the world. Um, so if you were to, uh, say, go uh, target in Canada, you would probably get um, a Google data center um, close to there in Canada, whereas if you were to go, say, from London, you would get an IP address of a data center in London. If you were to query have a site on Cloudflare, we do things slightly differently in the fact of no matter where you are around the world, you will get the same IP address map you will get the same set of IPs returned back to you um, through our DNS service, but we're still able to steer traffic um, to a closed data center. And the core of this is really down to how our network architecture is laid out. So a traditional kind of, um, um, a traditional network, say um, what Google would do, is they would do geo-steering at the DNS level. At the DNS level, they would decide which data center to point you at um, by changing the IP that's served to you. Um, that can be bypassed and you need to wait for DNS um, caches to expire should you want to reroute traffic. So instead when we built Cloudflare, we built it such that it's an anycast network. The geo-routing is done by the routing protocol of the internet known as BGP um, and that gives us benefits such as immediate failover and users cannot control which data center they re uh, they're routed to. It is done through the routing protocol of the internet. So say a user in Exeter in 
England um, wants, uh, queries um, a Cloudflare IP, they will always hit our data center in London, um, providing that's the closest path from their, um, from their ISP to our data center. Um, the distance in terms of, it may not necessarily be geographic, so the shortest path may be slightly different. It may be that a, um, someone will appear with us in a data center like Manchester instead of in London. Um, but ultimately what it comes down to is, um, is the distance over the internet. We will always route to the closest available uh, data center or point of presence. So um, whenever I query my domain, uh, no matter where I am around the world, I will always get that set of IPs. And this has some um, really nice properties for us. It means we're really close to users. Um, we have a really big network, so we can go to ISPs around the world and we can directly interconnect with them. We don't have to go through, um, we don't have to go through those um, like fiber networks or those kind of things. We're able to just directly interconnect at that level. Um, so, sure. Go for it. There is a mechanism for us to do that. I'll touch on that a little later, if that's all right. Um, so um, we, we are close to users, um, and we do peer with local ISPs. So that way, um, our data centers will directly interconnect at that level. So you can see there is um, um, someone on our network team providing me a, a lovely graph there. You can see um, where the graph is green. That's where we're routing traffic to Frankfurt. But the moment we establish a peering connection, we're able to instantly reroute that connection to a local data center and we're able to, um, to move traffic around accordingly. We don't have to wait for DNS to propagate and that's really useful because we, um, we see a large part of the internet which doesn't respect things like um, DNS, uh, TTLs and things like that. Absorbing DDoS as well, the, user ha or, um, the uh, end user has no control over specifically the data center they're routed to, it's done through BGP and that makes rate limiting really easy. So when you want to block volumetric attacks, so you want to say someone could only make one request a minute to slash login, uh, we have a really nice property in the fact um, we only have to rate limit to one data center because we don't have to have data centers talk to each other because if someone is coming from a particular IP address, we are confident that they will uh, be routed to a single data center. Um, to address your question um, uh, around um, how we handle when data isn't in a particular data center, it ties in with a product we have called Argo, which is um, two things. It's um, smart routing and tiered caching. So we built this really big network around the world. And um, one of the things we noticed we could do is we could, instead of routing over the public internet, we were able to route traffic directly from data center to data center. So if you connecting to, um, say, your origin server is in London, and you have um, someone who's buying from you in Australia. Instead of routing uh, from um, a Cloudflare pop in Australia to, um, to London, uh, um, and then directly going over, say, fiber cables, or um, other public internet infrastructure, which probably isn't the most stable, we can actually route from Cloudflare pop to Cloudflare pop and determine the best path on that basis. And one of the things we're able to do is along that route, we're able to do something called tiered caching, where if the content is available in a data center along the route, we can serve that cached copy directly from there. Um, and we're always able to have um, a, a data center close to the origin, which all traffic will go through. So that way, um, we're able to protect the origin by making sure cached uh, co uh, content is always available without necessarily ensuring that it's um, in kind of, uh, every, uh, well, it's not necessarily available in every data center, but it is somewhere in the network. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Excellent. So um, when it comes to DDoS attacks, we are quite lucky in the fact, um, uh, not just with the amount of data centers we have, but um, the capacity within their means um, we're able to absorb volumetric attacks and we don't have to route to things like black holing particular IP addresses. We're able to absorb and filter that traffic um, on a more uh, targeted basis than just black holing. Um, 
So the way Cloudflare traditionally is set up, um, here's my blog here, um, you will traditionally make a change where we will take control of the authoritative DNS of your, um, of your server. And what that will mean is you will change your authoritative name servers over to us, and we will proxy traffic between, um, between the user, uh, or we will choose what DNS records to serve effectively. And that's determined by the orange cloud you see in the uh, status column. So if that's set to a gray cloud, we'll just serve the records for whatever your origin server is. If it's orange cloud, it will instead serve um, DNS records from Cloudflare, and we will proxy that traffic through our network. In order to do this, we have an internal DNS architecture known as RRDNS. So we have an internal source of truth of what DNS records should be, and we expose that through our public RRDNS service. So um, RRDNS effectively, when someone queries a Cloudflare name server, that will serve its request from the internet, and it will respond with Cloudflare IPs for proxied um, records. So if a record, uh, so instead of showing your origin, it will show a Cloudflare um, IP, and then the traffic will route through us instead of going directly to the uh, data center. There is a flip side to this. Uh, some people will set up DNS records for things like CNames. So in the example before, you could see I CNamed to my, GitHub, uh, uh, my GitHub.io domain there. In that case, it's, um, Cloudflare will actually have to look up uh, which server it should um, send those requests to for GitHub.io. It'll have to look up um, the DNS for that. And that we also have an internal DNS resolver as part of our RRDNS um, infrastructure to handle that. So um, at the network edge, when a net request goes through us, all requests go, um, go through, uh, we have a Lua NGINX module. Um, so all requests go through uh, Lua effectively. Uh, things like our web application firewall are written in Lua. Um, and we're also able to transform requests through that. Um, there are other services there, so things like TLS management, termination of TLS connections on that front is done via a dedicated service which is written um, in Go so we, can, um, uh, so we can terminate requests before they go to other processes in the server itself. Um, and then the actual um, request which goes through Lua, we can determine whether we should block requests coming in, we can transform them on the way out, and we can do behavior like that. Um, but obviously, all this produces a lot of logs, um, and we need a lot of logs because um, one of the thing, things you lose when you use a, a CDN service or, a, um, or an edge service uh, like us is you, um, you outsource the, uh, who your traffic is going to, so you need to be able to keep on top of that. Um, the interesting thing about Cloudflare is we see such a significant part of the internet, about 10%, that we can't really, um, we can't really um, store all these logs, there's far too many, and we don't really want to for uh, privacy purposes. So when we have a log line um, produced from our edge, we will typically um, send that to a central data processing warehouse, um, which I won't tell you where that is, but um, from there what we're able to do is we're able to aggregate and analyze that. And what we do is the request uh, or the uh, log line will come in um, and it will go through a message queue um, system called Apache uh, Kafka, where it'll be consumed by microservices written in Go, um, where those requests can be analyzed, and then all that data is consolidated um, in uh, Citus DB so we can specifically present the user with aggregate analytics for that, or we can, for our enterprise customers in cases where they want typical kind of Apache style logs, we can also um, give those to them uh, and share those logs out um, over a limited period of time before that we purge them. I'm not sure the specifics of where we're at at the moment. Um, I'll double check that for you, though. <laughs> um, yeah, um, it's uh, typically around that point. Um, I'm not sure on the specific, though. Um, so just to visualize this, um, this is how the logging infrastructure works for a DNS request as it comes through Cloudflare. Um, so our, our DNS will respond to the public internet or a system like Unbound. We have a log forwarder which passes that through Kafka, and it'll go through a set of consumers. Um, until it's aggregated into RDBMS. And then that can be consumed by API services, which can be exposed into the Cloudflare dashboard. Um, so that's my uh, quick introduction to Cloudflare. Any questions? <laughs>
I think I've uh, answered them all along. The I'll go for it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Um, we're recording this as well, so um, I'll be more than happy to send out the slides. I, I moved through that rather quickly as well. Um, excellent. So um, I think up next we'll have um, a talk from Ivan about our Cloudflare Apps platform. Um, and um, is everyone good to straight away dive into that? Excellent. Right. Um, let's hope the AV all goes perfectly. <laughs> Thanks. Um, for those 